Welcome back to The Lemon Factor. I'm Chad, and today we are going to discuss aftermarket exhaust for the 2019 Honda Accord 2.0 Touring that we have as our project car. And as we go through these, we're gonna be focusing on what's available for the 2.0 version. When I did my research, it did appear as though there could be some slight differences between the two liter engine and the 1.5 liter. So just keep that in mind that at least from based on my research, while they may be the same, and I'll point that out, there might be some slight differences. If you're interested in finding out what aftermarket exhausts are available for the 10th generation Honda Accord, Before we proceed, please don't forget to subscribe, turn on the notifications, like, share, and comment. Let's take a listen to the stock exhaust on the Honda Accord. I'll do a cold startup. And now this is uh, as it's warmed up a little bit. As you can hear, which is no surprise, this is a four-door sedan. Yes, a family car. It does come in some tr trim levels that make it a lot more sportier. That the exhaust on the 2019 Honda Accord is pretty subdued. For the 10th generation Honda Accord, I've gone through, based on my research, found a handful. But I will tell you that, surprisingly, there were not as many exhausts available. And that might be due to uh, its relatively newness. However, I'm not sure that that really is the case considering that just recently the 2020 Accord has just been released. So we're now into the third model year for the Accord. And I quite frankly thought that there would be more options out there than what I found. People generally buy an aftermarket exhaust for a number of different reasons. Uh, one might be for the performance. So in general, a larger diameter exhaust with less restriction, whether that is due to the muffler or bends in, an, in the exhaust, uh, will generally yield more horsepower. Um, other people may look to replace their exhaust because of the sound, and they're looking for a either a different sound, a louder exhaust, different tone, looking for those crackle and pops that um, people uh, seem to enjoy when uh, a car is shifting or downshifting. Um, and then three for aesthetics, for the looks itself. What's interesting is as I went through the research and looking into what exhausts are available, I did find that for the most part, all of the exhausts that I found have the same inner diameter of 2.5 inches. Uh, so when it comes to the general generally when it comes to the performance they should all probably fare comparatively however some of them have additional resonators the muffler size might be different uh, so that may impact uh, the actual performance at the end of the day second the tone uh, because of the muffler and the inclusion or the different approaches to the muffler they'll have different tones different volumes and then third when it comes to the look uh, all of them are stainless steel, so they look good, but quite frankly, that's stainless steel from under the car, and that will probably help with longevity. But when it comes to exhaust tips, all of the ones that I've found actually use the standard, the stock, the OEM exhaust finishers, so the exhaust tips, they stop at that. So from an outward perspective, you'll never see the difference, which for some people, that might be good if you're going for that stealth look. For other people, who are looking for something more, uh, you may have to buy uh, a different aftermarket uh, finisher. And maybe I'll do a, a review of some of those. When I was looking for the exhaust, I did find some of them out there. But if you're looking for uh, a different look, uh, these exhausts won't have it. But let's jump into it. One of the more popular is Borla. So Borla has been making aftermarket exhaust for uh, a number of years for all sorts of uh, uh, making models, not just the uh, they're not specific to one brand. If you were to go to their website, which let's do that, let's go to their website here. As you can see here, um, show all, 
They do have a number of different cat back, axle back, header, manifolds, etc. Today we're going to focus on cat back exhaust and let's just take a look at this image here just to show you the difference. So if you go to the Borla website and you sort it by the exhaust for the 2018 plus Honda Accord, both the 2.0 and the 1.5. So again, the 2018, 2019, and the 2020, also known as the 10th generation Accord. You'll see here that it is made out of T304 stainless steel construction, which is good um, when it comes to stainless steel. The diameter is a two and a half inch, which I think is a is the perfect size. Um, yes, you'll see larger, but larger as in three inches is generally on really high performance race built cars. I would say two and a half inches based on both my personal experience as well as what I've read uh, on the forum and talked to people is a nice blend of it sounds good but not obnoxious and it does help um, it does help with the flow of the exhaust and relieve some of the restrictions in a smaller diameter that a smaller diameter exhaust may uh, may provide. So I like the fact that it's two and a half inch inner diameter. It does split to 2.25 inches. And what that means is, uh, as you can see from the picture here, it, it, the Accord is a dual exhaust and somewhere about three quarters of the way back from the car, it then splits the pipe and it's at that split that it goes from two and a half to 2.25 inches. Apparently Borla is advertising, uh, highlighting that there's no drone. It does uh, work with all of the factory hangers, uh, so that's good. Uh, you don't have to um, customize anything. And then, uh, like all of the others, it works with the factory valence or exhaust tips, also known as the exhaust finisher. So it's these pieces right here. So you will not be replacing these. So just be aware of that. I don't want you to purchase a Borla and be surprised when you get it. And whether you install it yourself or have someone install it, that the look from outside is the same. It will have it will utilize the same OEM finishers in the back unless you get. Um, a different finisher or a different exhaust tip um, separately from the Borla exhaust itself. So scrolling down, when it comes to a warranty, uh, like all of the Borla exhaust products, it does come with the million mile warranty. Let's just click on that for a second here. As you can see, it provides uh, a little bit more detail of their warranty. And from what I've heard, um, it's probably the best. So if you come down here, it does show 2018, 19, Accord, the Sport, the Touring, the EXL, the 1.5, the 2.0 liter, both the automatic, the manual. So this will fit all of them, uh, all different models. And let's just click on that. We can go through some of the pictures here. You know, again, this is the cat back, so it's not an axle back. It does start at the cat, come all the way through from two and a half inches, at the split, it then cuts down to 2.25 inches, where it then um, enters into both of these mufflers, and then it has the uh, tips that then are just sitting right behind the exhaust finishers for the car. So it sits right behind these right here. And I'm not gonna play this for you. I mean, you can go out to YouTube and listen to clips from Borla yourself. I will caution you that you know, when you listen to any exhaust online, it will be very variable. It all depends on the type of microphone, the quality of the microphone, where the microphone's placed, the volume that it's been set up at. As far as the volume, you're never gonna know it from online. As far as the drone, you're going to need to drive it or hear, hear it for yourself, but at least it'll give you some indication of what to expect. And then when it comes to price, even though the MSRP on the website here indicates 1,100 and let's round it to $76, that's a lot, uh, that's a lot of money. What I did find it for is, I found it in several, uh, several places online for $1,050 and that's including the shipping. So definitely cheaper, but when it comes to an exhaust, definitely on the high side. Borla does indicate that this is an aggressive, allowed exhaust. So keep that in mind, even according to them, this is on the louder side. 
So moving on from Borla, let's go to the Magnaflow. So on the, the Magnaflow website, and I do believe, I could be wrong, let me know if I am, that Magnaflow was the first one to come out with the exhaust for the 10th generation Accord. And right off the bat, you can see that the diameter is the same as Borla, so two and a half inch inner diameter made of stainless steel. Uh, I will point out though that the stainless steel is different. It is not the same T304 that the Borla has. It is 409. 409 is a lesser grade stainless steel. So just put it into perspective, you know, Borla's stainless steel is probably a higher quality material and will probably last a little bit longer. On the Magnaflow website, it does indicate that the sound is moderate or mild. Uh, so comparatively, now I'm sure they don't get together uh, Borla and Magnaflow to compare the sound, but at least on the Borla website, it does indicate that it's aggressive, that it is loud, while the Magnaflow website indicates that it's only moderate or a mild interior sound. And that's probably important. That's important if you're looking for something that's um, not too loud, uh, but something more than what the stock provides. And again, they're both two and a half inches, which I, I think is good from a uh, performance perspective. When it comes to the pricing, the pricing again for the Borla was 1,050. Uh, the website here for Magnaflow and what I found out there for Magnaflow is $888 shipped. So it is cheaper. Um, however, you would expect it to be cheaper because it probably it does have a lesser grade stainless steel when it comes to the warranty. Uh, however, it's relatively speaking the same. One of the key differences between the Borla and the Magnaflow is that the Magnaflow exhaust has three mufflers compared to Borla's two. So Magnaflow has a third that is five inches and it's in the main body, kind of in the middle of uh, the underneath of your car. So it's adding an, an extra muffler to cut down on that noise. And for some of you, uh, that might be a good thing. If you think that the Borla is uh, too loud, then Magnaflow might be a good option for you to, you, you to go in. And then let's look at the last one. Yes, I, I, I believe it or not, I have only found three. You know, um, I thought there'd be more, but um, I only found three exhausts. The third one is the thermal R&D exhaust. So we're on the thermal website here. This is for the um, 2018 Honda Accord 2.0. It is the front pipe back exhaust, which is nice. Uh, let me get a little bit better picture here. So it does have the resonator muffler here and it comes all the way to the back. For this on their website, they indicate $840. It looks like it's on sale when I did this. Uh, it was about $900, so it's slightly cheaper than the Magnaflow. It does have a lifetime warranty. Like the others, is two and a half inches, is made out of the T304 stainless steel. Here's a good picture for the, R, the uh, thermal R&D. You can see the exhaust coming here. Uh, go into the mufflers, and then they stop right at the finishers, the exhaust finishers in the back. Either another, you can see a little bit of the stainless steel and the muffler in the back. And here's a picture of the full exhaust. It does indicate drone-free interior cabin. It does indicate an aggressive accelerating sound, so the key might be accelerating. They all should be aggressive when it comes to accelerating. Um, and it does have a lifetime warranty, which is good. Again, I'm not going to play these. Uh, there's a lot of YouTube videos on all three of these exhausts, so you can go out there and listen to them. Uh, one thing to note here is that the thermal R&D does use a true, this is in quotes, a true Hemmelts technology to control a drone. And if we were to Compare this to our other project car, the Mazda Miata. The Goodwin Racing does use the Hemmelts technology for the exhaust for the Miata, and based on reviews, it does work fairly well. I don't know, and I don't have personal experience, how well it works for uh, this exhaust, the thermal R&D, on the Honda Accord, but as far as the technology is concerned, 
I have seen it in action on uh, you know, another manufacturer for a different vehicle and it works pretty well. So that's the thermal R&D. And then if we were to look at uh, just comparing them again, so we have three exhausts for the 10th generation, the Borla Catback S-Type, the Magnaflow Street Series Catback, and the Thermal R&D Catback. They have different levels of uh, sound and aggressiveness, and I would say based on the research that the Borla is probably the more aggressive, while the Magnaflow and the Thermal R&D are a little bit less. When it comes to materials that they're made out of, both the Borla and the Thermal R&D are made of a higher grade T304 stainless steel compared to Magnaflow's 409. When it comes to the pipe diameter, it's the same for all three. It's two and a half inches, then splitting to 2.25, two and a quarter inches. As far as a comparison for the pricing, Borla is the more expensive at a street price of $1,050 compared to Magnaflow's 888. And um, Thermal R&D, let me just quickly go back. It, it is on sale for 840. So, you know, as of this time, it is the cheaper option. And then the warranty, they all have a lifetime or Borla's million mile warranty. So they have a comparable uh, warranty its, itself. So what would you choose? Uh, what are you looking for in your exhaust? Are you looking for performance? I would say in general, they'd all probably perform from a horsepower standpoint relatively the same. I would give a little bit of an edge to Borla only because it does not have the extra muffler that I believe both uh, the Magnaflow has as well as the Thermal. If you look at the Thermal, we just go back to the picture again, you can see back here um, there is a resonator slash muffler in the back and that could add a little bit more restriction. I would not expect a lot so I would compare I would go out on a limb and say, from a performance standpoint, they're all comparable. If you were looking to, to get every ounce of performance out of one of these exhausts, I would probably go with the Borla, only because the Magnaflow and the Thermal has an additional resonator slash muffler in the midsection, and that could add a little bit more resistance. But I do not believe it would be significant, so I think they're probably all comparable. When it comes to a look or aesthetics aspect, they all stop at the exhaust finisher, so they're all going to, from an outward standpoint, I mean, yes, you know, looking under the car, they may look slightly different, but they're all stainless steel, so uh, they all look pretty good, you know, given the pictures that we have here, but they all stop at the exhaust finisher, so you're, you're not going to have a different look. Uh, when it comes to the quality, the Borla and Thermo may have the edge compared to the Magnaflow's 409, if we're talking about the pricing, so if price is no object, maybe go with the Borla. I think the biggest difference besides the price, the difference between 840 with the thermal and the 1050 with the Borla exhaust, is probably gonna come down to the sound. If you're looking for the most aggressive sounding exhaust, Borla is probably the one. If you want something a little bit more uh, subdued, a little bit quieter, Magnaflow or Thermal R&D will probably uh, be a little bit quieter, a little, little less aggressive than Borla. Please do not rely solely on listening to clips on YouTube, online. If you have an opportunity, see if you can hear it in person. Try to connect with someone on a forum that has one. Go to a car meet, a car event, a car show, autocross, um, anything that would have these cars out there just so that you can hear them, whether it's, you know, cold startup at idle, driving aggressively versus uh, cruising on the highway. We want to make sure here at uh, the Lemon Factor that you're getting the right product for you. And the best way to do that when it comes to these exhausts is to test them out yourself by hearing them yourself. Uh, when it comes to tone and sound is really subject subjective and it's really up to you to decide what you like. Uh, so keep that in mind. And then lastly, let me know what, you know, what one of these exhausts you either have experience with uh, or you plan on purchasing. I'd love to hear from you. If you're interested in hearing more about our project car, the 2019 Honda Accord, if you're interested in finding out what one of these aftermarket exhausts that I'm going to purchase. And if you're interested in seeing a how-to video on installing the exhaust, please don't forget to subscribe, turn on the not notifications so that you'll be 
made aware when that uh, video is posted and leave a comment below. Let me know what you'd like to hear or see more of. But thank you for joining today. Hopefully this was helpful for you. Until next time, thank you.